Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. <clears throat> well, as I promised in my recent intro vid, explaining I'm going to be doing uh, kit reviews uh, for several of the kits, the new kits, uh, and maybe some older ones as well, uh, for the uh, ICM company in the Ukraine. Uh, and as promised, here we go. So we've got their new 70 second scale OV-10A Bronco US Attack aircraft, ground attack, <coughs> reconnaissance aircraft, even used at times for dropping parachutists and all sorts of things. So a very multi-role aeroplane. We also have <coughs> the paint set that goes with this. So we'll have a look at that, we'll have a look at that after. But I haven't owned any of these boxes, they're still completely, yeah, they are still sealed. They've got ooh, quite a little tape on them as well. So I will just uh, undo that if you'll just uh, indulge me for a second because there's quite a bit of tape I hadn't realised but it has had to travel a bit so no bad thing really yes there we go okay so all sealed so yes let's have a read about uh, what we've got here so first of all it's kit number now this is the 72nd scale version of course so it's a scaled down version of the 48th which I've already reviewed some time ago uh, and it is kit number what have we got there? 72185. And on the side we've got some rather handy uh, historical detail. Uh, and I'm not going to ramble on and use my have my usual rant about other manufacturers who can't be bothered to do this. ICM are very good at it. So are Airfix, you know. Perhaps not the best in that respect, either of them. But it's enough. They give you a, a bit of a feel. They tell you about the product, uh, the actual subject. Um, and we want that, we don't just want a load of plastic with no proper instructions and with no paint call outs and with no history. So ICM, well done because you're doing this right. So let's just read it. Uh, I've got to tell you it's a little it's a little bit tricky, I haven't got my other big glasses handy. It's a little bit tricky because the, the writing's on a, it's black and it's on quite a dark background. It says, in 1963, it's quite a challenge. 1963, the United States announced a competition uh, to develop a plane for use in military conflicts. The winner of the competition in August 64 was the project of North American, which designed the OV-10 and gave it the name Bronco in the armed forces. Combat testing of the new aircraft in Vietnam began in the summer of 68. The aircraft were used very intensely thanks to their intensively, thanks to their being able to be based on unprepared paved airfields and the short time required for flight. So it's quite, it's quite a short take off a landing plane as well, of course. During combat missions, the OV-10A demonstrated high efficiency and good combat survivability, becoming a kind of benchmark for anti-guerrilla attack aircraft. They saw combat operations and continued until the end of the Vietnam War, and these aircraft were su successfully used by the air forces of many countries all around the world. This box contains an unassembled plastic model. Right, well, let's get into it. On the other side, we have got Four variants, a bit more detail in size, let's have a look at that. Um, I know with ICM they're very good at packing things, they really do pack them well. Maybe maybe they're too good at this because uh, I've talked about this before, sometimes you just can't get it. It's a box within a box normally. Yes, there we go, box within a box. Just put our Ukraine flag over there to move it to fraction. And here we go, oh yeah, yeah, I can see straight away the sort of yeah, my brain was expecting it to be bigger because I'm used to the other one. So we've got one bag and then we've got acrylic paints detail set. I'll pop that over there, just trying to leave some space in there. There we go. Now then, this should be a fairly short review because it's not too big a model. So we have got our water-based acrylic paints guide here. And ICM varnishes, a little bit of a, a plug for them. And it's actually got the full range, colour range. Now that's impressive. And the Ghost of Kiev also talks about their grey primer and their acrylic thinners here. Uh, and you've got black primer, grey primer, dark yellow, green, olive drab primer or white primer. That's cool. I like that. That's uh, interesting to have coloured primers like that. That is impressive. That's something I might have a go at. I might ask them for some of those and give them a shot. Then we've got their own acrylic thinner. And the same, you know, at least 40 to 60%. I go generally. I tend to go to the higher sixty percent. You, you want it to be more than half, just. And then we've got all the different bottles that are available. Special, special sets that are available. So you've got the Cobra set, 
Ghost of Cave, I think I've asked for the Cobra set, I can't remember now. Um, and there's a whole range of them as you can see, it's World War II American Aircraft, USS AF Pilots. Very specific paint sets, really good, really great idea that. And uh, sorry, I've just got a nasty little fly, it's been bugging me for five minutes trying to get rid of that, sorry about that. And then on the back, you've actually got the colour guide itself, so that's really useful. I'm going to be keeping that, that's quite handy to have. Uh, and if I don't keep it, I will photograph it. <laughs> so I've got a, a constant reference. But look at that chocolate, chocolate for chipping. Chocolate, is that a joke? <laughs> So the ICM having to go at some English humour, I think there might be, look, chocolate chipping, ha ah, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, okay, so that is really a very good visual uh, depiction of what they're doing there in the paints section. Very handy indeed. Then we've got our, well, while we're talking about paints, why don't I actually talk about the paints and keep it all in context, yeah? Why don't I actually do that and uh, just pop that over there. We'll talk about these, this paint set we've got here. Um, let's have a little look at these. It's very relevant to this review, isn't it? So here they are, they're quite, quite small bottles. They are small. How many mils is that? Acrylic paint, does it say? Uh, 12 millimetre, 12 millilitres, that's what it is. So, whoops, flying out right up the centre. Here we go. Let's get them out so you can see them. Uh, varnish satin, black. Let's see if you in here. That's the Ukraine flag. Uh, Grey, black. Varnish satin, oily steel, oily steel. And then we've got blue grey, the underside I think. And then we've got camouflage, oops, camouflage green. I'm just giving them a quick shake. Yeah, they don't, they don't have a BB ball bearing them, but um, they're quite nice, aren't they? And they're just enough, aren't they, to do to do a model of this scale, more than enough actually. Even on the 48 scale, I think you'd be fine. Um, yeah, uh, you don't get as much as uh, obviously something like a Tamiya pot or Mr. Hobby or whatever. But no, that's quite a that's quite a significant and impressive little set of paints. I think it's one of those things I can't. There's only so much you can say when you're uh, getting a pot out like that. But they they've got a nice little cap on them. They've got a good seals by the look of it. Probably not going to leak like some others do. <laughs> you know who they are. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Nice little size, you can store quite a few of those without taking up too much room as well, so that's quite handy. So we'll get into those more when we actually try them. But as you can see, I'll leave them in the background. Or will I, because they're going to get in the way. I'll actually move them. Let's just be sensible. Let's pop them over there so they don't get uh, cause focus problems. And we'll get into our destructions instructions. Okay, so again, ICM make a bit of an effort. They actually do some research, which is so lacking in many other manufacturers. And it says, even gives a plug here for the uh, number 3008, uh, which is the one we just looked at, the paint set. Some decals there, everything's dropping out. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, basically the same write up we've just read on the actual box, but it also goes into the technical specs. Uh, wingspan 12.1 metres, length 12.1 metres. Oh, okay, sounds like a square, isn't it? Takeoff weight 6.5 tonnes. It's not, it's not heavy, is it? That's not heavy. That's only two cars in weight. It's like two SUVs. Big ones, granted. Two Bentleys. <coughs> Engines, two Garrett. Tur these are uh, turbo prop, of course. Um, turbo prop. I am right in saying that, aren't I? Because I got in trouble with this before. Somebody corrected me. I think I'm right. Turbo prop was Garrett turbos. 715 horsepower. So it's got 1500 horsepower. Maximum speed, 152 kilometres an hour, so yeah, I think I said this on the, the, the review, it's, <coughs> it's, almost, it's got almost Spitfire-like performance. R uh, combat radius of 367 kilometres, 200 miles. Maximum ceiling in metres of 8,500, so what's that? That's um, 24,000 feet, okay. Armament for 7.60 machine guns, LUA rocket launchers, bombs and incendiary bombs, and it gives you your colour guide here. Nice bit of artwork. So, oh, that's where I wonder where the tissue is gone. Um, yeah, I probably just want a little bit of. Uh, we'll have a look at those. Why don't we have a look at these dead cows? Don't worry. Now, usually ICM, I think, uh, they either produce their own or they're produced fairly locally, I think. And it doesn't say, in fact, where they're produced. 
uh, I think it's their own sort of homegrown uh, manufacturer. And you've got the, again, scaled down version. All the instrumentation there for this very unusual tandem style of cockpit, of course. The, the, uh, very like the Cobra helicopter, isn't it? Um, this, this, it's almost like the front of the Cobra stuck on an aircraft rather than a helicopter, this aircraft. <laughs> uh, and then we've got some nice, some nice shark's mouth. And they, they look quite nice. Um, my experience of ICM decals previously was on, especially on the MiG-25, was they weren't the stickiest, um, but they were fine. They were fine. No problems at all, really. Just make sure you use plenty of setting solution that go down a tree. Uh, and they conform very well, so good in that respect. And then we've got like a prancing horse, almost like a Ferrari Cavalino there, isn't it? Um, yeah, so we've got some interesting stencils, quite a few of them. But nothing too challenging, you know. We've got some so nice shark's mouth there. Um, US uh, stars and bars there. Very good. Very good. Okay. <coughs> Let's have a look at the instructions then. Zoom you out a bit for this. See it properly. So, uh, usual thing with ICM, we've got the, um, the spru trees map. Uh, and it seems to be indicating you'll use everything that's on these... Uh, that's on these uh, sprue frames. So one, two, three, and then just the fourth one is the clear part. So shouldn't take too long to assemble this. So we go straight into building up your pilot seat. Um, I'm presuming it's the pilot. I'm just trying to remember. I think the pilot does sit in the front on this aircraft. In fact, it's not like the uh, not like the Cobra, where it's the other way around. And the pilot's at the back there. You've got a seat here. Uh, looks like an ejector seat. In fact, was it ejector seat? Yeah, I think it was, Jack see. <coughs> Building up all your cockpit floor. And you've got your control panel surrounds. Um, you've got your uh, stick, control stick, pedals going in. Uh, and then you've got the separator bulkhead for the, uh, the navigator stroke we uh, weapons officer at the back. Uh, Wizzo, I'm not sure that's what they called them at the time, but navigator and Wizzo. Uh, and then you're going to put these in, so again, uh, I think it's got dual dual control. It looks like it has dual control in terms of, looks like it's got pedals at the front, pedals at the back. Is that right? I think it is. I think it might be, be able to be flown from the rear as well, looks like it. Um, interesting. So there we've got uh, all your instrumentation going in. You've got your main pilot at the front, obviously. you've got main, all the main control uh, panels to either side of him. And the actual instrument panel and the coving for it going in here. And obviously we've got a decal as the instrumentation, which looks pretty good in fairness. Uh, better that you might remember that's the one thing on the um, Tamiar uh, file, the DO335, that wasn't too special. It was a really nice kit that, but the only thing that let it down slightly, a tiny thing, was just the instrument panel. It was a bit, a bit poorly. The graduation and detail of the instruments wasn't very good. I think this is better, even though it's smaller scale. Put your coving in there. Then you're building up underneath, of course. You've got your landing bay um, and gear going in, in the nose. And then you've got your floor of the aircraft, the fuselage going underneath. It's quite a lot of stages for a 70 second scale. It's quite a lot of detail. Um, you've got some um, pockets and panels going in the side of the, of the interior of the fuselage cockpit. Then you're putting your two cockpit sides, sorry, fuselage sides come together there. And then you've got like a, a skid, protective skid that goes underneath. Is it a skid or is it a pylon? I think it's a skid, that. No, it's a pylon. It's a weapons pylon, I think, not a skid. It just looks like one, doesn't it? Huh. Uh, then you've got these sponsons that go on the side, and these are the weapons holding sponsons that have the guns in, your 7.65mm um, machine guns. So you, you quite a lot of detail for a small kit, isn't it? <clears throat> Those are going in on the side. You've got the uh, part of the uh, one of the um, doors there for the main nose gear, uh, the bay. Then we've got the actual wheel and the nose uh, the nose leg itself. And then you've got these various sway braces here that are going in for all the weapons that can be dropped and held on those pylons underneath the sponsons. And then you get to the wings. Uh, sorry, I'm, I've skipped over. This is actually the cannons, the machine guns, I should say, themselves. 
that's actually the barrels, the exit barrels here coming out of the sponsons on the side. So that's quite quite impressive for the scale, isn't it? Then we've got our wings, top wing going on, uh, and then a couple of holes just to be drilled. Um, this I think is for the this is for I was gonna say if it's not for the weapons, is it? What is that for? Something underneath going in there, that's not sure what it is, top of my head. It'll become clear in a second. Then you've got your um, this is the lower wing, all these multiple sections you can see here, that's the lower wing sections going in. And then we've got some, they've done this nicely, remember the scale, it's quite small, and they've done ailerons and flaps. Look at that! That's impressive, well done ICM. Something we need to see a lot more of really. I mean, you know, on the, the file we didn't have any of that, and that was 48 scale. I know it's an older kit, but uh, it's not common at 72nd to get that sort of detail. So that's very nicely done indeed. I mean, they've literally just scaled down the big kit, it looks to me, which is brilliant. <laughs> That's what we want, because it was really good. And then you've got various lumps and bumps, and uh, there's like flaps and uh, vents, uh, radiator exits and things. And then we have the, <coughs> the wing coming down and meeting the fuselage, and then you've got you know, canopy windscreen going in, complete with a, like a gun sight, I think it is. That comes down here, gets put on top of the aircraft, all coming together now. Then you're building up your your glass house canopy and you start with the sort of roof section of it and then the, the two sides which have got these opening windows at the side, again like a helicopter. Very helicopter like isn't it, the, the whole cockpit canopy arrangement. They come in there <clears throat> and then you've got a couple of hours to be drilled on the sides. Um, just to do with handrails, I think. Things. Uh, so there is a one or two holes you've got to drill on this. This is on the booms, obviously, where it's going to have the engine nozzles at the front and the vertical tails at the rear. Then you've got your main gear going in there, and you're building up the main gear to the side over on here. Um, the only thing I would say about the ICM instructions is that they are very clear, but they're not, not photogenic when I'm looking at the camera image that you're seeing now. It's a bit faint, isn't it? They don't, they don't use very bold printing. That's one, one thing that might, they might want to think about in the future, perhaps. Just making it a bit bolder. Um, I think Tacom are quite good at doing that, for example. Uh, anyway, now we've got the gear going into the, uh, the engine nacelle here. And we've got... Um, <clears throat> the front of the engines basically, and you don't actually get an engine, but where the engines are going to protrude and you're going to put your props on, that's protruding from the nacelle on the boom there. Then we turn our attention to the rear of the boom, where you've got your rudders going in. Again, separate rudders, it's excellent, isn't it? You've got rudders, you've got exhausts here, exhaust pipe, and then you've got um, all the mechanism for the, for the uh, port landing gear going in, so you're repeating the process from earlier really. Uh, as we've just seen, a couple of repeat. So it's rinse and repeat. Yeah, doing all the same as we've just seen on the other side. Putting in your rudders, etc., etc. And, and again, separate elevators on the uh, horizontal stabiliser. That is absolutely fantastic. So then you bring it all together and it starts to look like a Bronco. You put in your stabilisers, bring your booms in, hope everything fits okay. And then you're going to put your propellers and your spinners on here. And you've got some um, flow generators, vortex generators that go on top of the... I know they're air brakes, aren't they? They're, they're, I thought they were flow generators. They're actually air brakes, these little fins that pop up on landing. So when the flaps are deployed, they come up and give additional aerodynamic braking. Little baby air brakes, basically. Um, I mean, this is a 70 second scale kit. This has got amazing detail on it. I'm absolutely amazed. Genuinely, irrespective that it's ICM, that's really well done. It's just a scaled down version of the 48 from what I can tell so far. Then you've got your uh, windscreen wiper <laughs> windscreen wiper going on the windscreen and then you've got your tyres and wheels going on underneath. And then finally we get to things like the various antennas and the main, and that's what the holes were for, yeah, the main pylons for going under the wings, which is why I wanted you to drill a hole. And then finally, that's it, you have completed the aircraft. Then we get to the loadout, so you've got... Um, now we don't get masks with ICM. <clears throat> and I am told we have to be a little bit careful with these sometimes, because 
Uh, there's been one or two comments, I think, was it on the Beaufort? Uh, it may have been Phil Flory, I can't remember. Somebody was building one of those and said that the mass set was not quite, not quite the right dimensions. Uh, I think it was a little bit oversized. So anyway, there's a lot of masking, so maybe there'll be a, an aftermarket out for this from Eduard or somebody, I don't know. Then we've got the be uh, weapons. Um, we've got these LUA-33 rockets, we've got snake eye bombs, that's the self-retarding bombs that are the fins that pop out. Mark-81 low drag bomb. Um, and then LU-69A, that's like a pepper pot, almost a mattress style of, of rocket. <coughs> <clears throat> and then you've got LA-68, which I think, somebody might correct me here, are they not Zuni rockets or is that the LA-10? There's that many different versions here. Which is the Zuni rocket? I think it's that, that small one, isn't it? Anyway, more snake eyes, um, blah blah blah, different versions, different different uh, options are offered. Uh, is that the Zuni rocket there? Oh, Confusing. I'm not so hot on these American Vietnam era weapons, if I'm honest. And one of you can shout out in the chat or mention it in the comments if I have it wrong. Then we've got a 150 gallon fuel tank. And finally, you bring basically all these options come together and you get this uh, very complex variety of weapons. I mean, really, I think there's no real rules here. No real rules here because I think that in Vietnam, you know, it depended on what they had in stock on that, the, literally that particular hour at the bases. I don't think there were any hard and fast rules. It depended on what the mission was really more than anything else. Anyway, then we come finally to the colour call outs and the stencil guide as well. And there's quite a few, uh, quite a few stencils to be going out here on the weapons, for example. Plenty underneath. And then it actually goes into the. It actually shows it. That's quite impressive. It shows it stencils and paint guide for every every single version. So even though there's a lot of crossover, of course. Um, so it says here. Why I'm back? So I'm getting ahead of myself. What does it say? There? It says. <coughs> Marine observation squadron number two at the Marble Mountain Air Facility in Vietnam. Marble Mountain. There you go. The first one. Second one is a light attack squadron, the Black Ponies, Bin Thu. Okay, so that's a real ground attack unit. Then we've got tactical air squadron at Da Nang in '72, and they've gone to this grey. Uh, they're based on the coast, of course. I suspect that's because they feel it blends in better on the coast. And then finally, on the back, uh, we've got the uh, 20th tactical air squadron at Da Nang in '72 again in grey. So, quite impressive instructions, um, very very clear. I mean ICM uh, don't use a lot of English um, wording but they kind of don't need to because to, based on my own experiences they, they're very clear, you know, that they, they're getting this international um, uh, nomenclature and way of presenting it. Um, there's some English, you know. But they, they do it in a way that's so clear that it doesn't matter what country you're from, it's pretty obvious what they're trying to say, really. So that's very, very good. So we've seen that, we've seen those. Let's get into the plastic and see what we think of the actual kit. So far, it really is just a scaled-down version of the 48, so it's going to be... I'm not sure about the retail price in the UK, I didn't ask them that, but I'm guessing it's around about the £30 mark. Uh, maybe slightly more, but... I've got a feeling it's quite good value considering what you're getting. Um, all you need really, you perhaps get one of their Vietnam um, perhaps they give them some, some figures to come, I'm not quite sure. That would be nice to have some figures to go with it. Um, or pilots. <laughs> My usual subject, you know, pilots and stands, etc. <laughs> Be nice to, with it being a smaller model though, it would be quite nice to have it on a stand and have it posed in flight perhaps. Right, <clears throat> so uh, we've actually got all four sprues together in one bag, which is a bit unusual I think. And usually ICM avoids certainly having four together, um, but again it's a smaller kit and it's not very expensive, so I suppose at this scale you can sort of forgive them for that. 
Uh, what one thing that does jump out and concern me a little bit straight away in terms of design is this pito head here, which is on the nose of the plane. It is on the nose, isn't it? Yeah, that. Sorry, there. That looks very vulnerable when you're building it, doesn't it? It might have been better if that was just added at the end, um, because it'd be very easy to knock that off, I think. But look at the uh, look at the detail here. We've got some lovely panel lining and riveting. And it's got this very nice ICM plastic that they use. I can't get my head around how small it is though, It's because I've seen the bigger one and that's sort of imprinted in my mind now. Um, so you've got your, your tail booms here, look, again, very small compared to the sort of size of my finger there. Yeah. Um, but look at the moulding accuracy, it's really sharp, isn't it? Look at the detail here underneath. This is the lower fuselage leading up to the main gear bay door. Uh, not the main, the nose. Lovely little propellers. Instrumentation, that's very good. At maximum zoom is, I can't actually get closer, but it's very finely done. And then you've got a couple of pylons. Um, and we've got those, these are lower sort of fillet sections that go under the, uh, the, sp uh, the booms. Very nicely done, very nicely moulded indeed, <coughs> as we expected. And then over on the other side, there's basically the other half, where we've got the other, sorry, where we've got the other two booms, or the other two sides I should say, relative sides. We've got the 150 gallon tanks here. And uh, we've got one of, that's the uh, elevator for the rear uh, horizontal stabiliser. Then we've got our tyres. We've got the cockpit here with the seats. It's all very nicely done. It's just, it is, it's just like a miniaturised 48 scale kit. And then you've got the uh, nice detail here on the end of the, the tail, uh, the wing I should say, wing outboard sections. It has these like lips, doesn't it, for aerodynamic reasons, like a lip uh, to stop the air from sort of bleeding off. It holds the, the lift right to the tip of the, the end of the wing. A bit like a Formula One car, really, isn't it? <coughs> end plate, you might call it, as they would say in Formula One. And then down here, we've actually got the, the full length top wing. Again, with these, uh, I mentioned these fillets. So you've actually got two sides of that here, you've got a top and a bottom, but the substantive bit is that is that other section underneath. Um, oh, actually got some parts that have just moved on the sprue, the sponsons here, very gentle. So you've got your sponsons for your guns underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very nice. Excellent moulding, no flash, nothing like that. And then we have, well, oh, actually we have two of the same. So there's actually, in real terms, there's only three different designs of sprue. So what have we got here? We have got all those little parts. Look how small they are, it's 70 seconds, it looks tidy to me. You've got your, uh, your back plate for your spinner and the spinner itself. You've got the, the front of the engine with the intakes. You've got all your little uh, rocket pods in your rockets and LAU rockets. Here you've got all those lovely flaps and ailerons. Which again, this scale is really good to see that and it's not common. It's not common at all. So ICM are doing something that others really aren't doing at that scale. Um, yeah, and there's, there's quite a lot of small parts, aren't there? Look at this lot. Quite a few to go out there. And it's beautifully formed, you know, there's no short shots and there's no flash. And you can see how they've gone out of their way to avoid problems with ejector pins. Look at how they've got the ejector pin stubs on the gear legs. Little tiny ones look, aren't they small? But of course that means that you don't get horrible ejector pin right in the middle of the part. And that, that's definitely lacking, there's no sort of issue with uh, Rogue, should we call them rogue ejector pins all over the place. That, by the way, of course, here is the uh, is the rudder. You can see the the riveting detail on it. I hope. 
Aren't they nice? Isn't it nice? It's so little dinky model, really, you know. <clears throat> I'm struggling to think off the top of my head of another 72nd scale kit of a reasonable sized aircraft that's got so much detail packed into it on a, such a small scale, you know. We have, of course, got our clear parts finally. Let's see what they're like. If we can get into them. Okay, there. Bring them in a bit, you'll need to see closer to this. Everything's so small, isn't it? <coughs> Alright, here we go. Now then, here we are. Oh, that's beautiful for a 70 second scale bit of glass. Look at this. Isn't that nice? That's really dinky. Super clear, very bright. Not really too much distortion, a little tiny bit toward the back. Toward the back here and the back here. Um, but then it's going through a couple of sort of couple of different direction changes and I think at the scale it's quite hard to get it absolutely perfect. But that's a nice, clear, bright, crisp bit of clear plastic if I ever saw it. If I get a bit closer, here you go, that's the main windscreen there. It goes, is it that way? Which way is it? It's that way, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite upright, isn't it? That's, that's up, so top is up and uh, bottom is down, obviously. That's really lovely. Well, um, <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? Uh, you've got some little lights there as well. It's difficult because people can say, oh yeah, well they supplied these, you've got to say nice things about them. Well, I don't have to actually, you know. I think ICM know that. I think one of the reasons that ICM actually chose me was that they thought that, they probably saw my other reviews and thought, oh, this guy thinks ICM are good and likes what we're doing. But, you know, they, they also know that if they screw up, um, that I'll probably going to say so. Uh, and I, I didn't sort of explain that probably in the first video. <coughs> that I'm, uh, my impartiality will not be altered by the fact that ICM are providing the kits at all. It, of course there's a lot of goodwill there, naturally, for lots of reasons, uh, beyond the obvious. Um, but if, if I think they're doing something wrong, I will not, I will not hesitate to say so. I said they could maybe just... It's not really a criticism, but I would like to see the printing that they're doing on the instructions just a bit more bold, because it's actually, um, especially if you're getting a bit older and you're hard of eyesight, <laughs> like me, in other words, it can be a little bit challenging, uh, especially if you're not, in a, if you're not I mean, I, I can't complain, I've got brilliant lighting, as you all know, as you can all see around me, I, want to see if I, I can't really complain, I haven't got enough lights, can I? <laughs> Um, and somebody, somebody obviously was a newcomer to the channel. I've had quite a few new subscribers show interest in this series. And someone said uh, the other day, "Oh, why do you wear black gloves?" Here we go again. You know. Well, uh, this is the reason why. Because here we go. Uh, now that kit has just been opened in front of your eyes. Uh, it will remain untouched by human hand, and I will be uh, now this particular one. I might actually, as I say, really want to give ICM a proper. Review. So I think that that's not too challenging in terms of time. So I think that these two will probably get built by me, which I think is what ICM wanted me to do from what they've said, really. I can't build them all, of course, and they know that. <clears throat> but where am I with this? Well, but, I mean, that is amazing. If it's about 30 to £32, yeah, OK, you can, you can stand back and say, oh, that's a lot for a 70 seconds ago. It's not anymore, is it? Actually, it's really competitive. That is beautifully detailed though. I'm struggling to think of a more crisp and sharp and detailed, all the flaps and ailerons and elevators even, and the rudders, you know, it's all separate and it's all been done properly, you know. So I'm, I'm inevitably going to give it nine and a half out of ten. I think that the, the there could be some improvement maybe with the instructions, maybe on that clear part's not quite as uh, utterly flawless uh, in terms of the slight distortion, but you know, 70 second scale, nobody's going to really see that at all when it's built. I think it'd be quite a nice, quite an enjoyable build, to be honest. Um, I'm just looking at the Peter head, it almost looks like a cannon, isn't it? It is a Peter head sticking out. That was the other criticism, wasn't it? That that was a bit vulnerable sticking out on the moulded nose, you know, just a real risk of you 
easily banging it. So I would say to the designers at ICM, it's uh, you know almost perfect. But just be aware because you've done that. I think on one or two others, maybe the, one of the helicopters. Um, it's just a bit risky having little fine detail, delicate parts sticking out of the mould like that. Better that the, uh, you can add them at the end of the build, I think. So there we go, nine and a half out of ten. I hope you thought that was interesting. Uh, we've got to do a proper review on those paints as well in the fullness of time. I'll bring our flag over here. I'll put the Bronco there. Everything where it should be. There we are. Quite, quite an impressive kit. And for the money, fantastic. I think you can have a really nice little... Uh, you get some figures. Let's check out the figures. I could do with a few figures. That's the only other thing I would say. Um, but as a kit, fantastic. Nicely done. Brilliantly executed. They've bothered to do, do the research. They've given you information about the aircraft. There is nothing not to like. If you're interested in Vietnam, that kit is a must. Especially for me, because I've got space issues now. I'm wondering if I might um, sell my existing kit um, and perhaps give half of that to charity for Ukraine and, and maybe keep this one and build this one. <coughs> because it will fit. It's nice and small, you know, manageable. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. That's where I'm at. So it's nine and a half out of ten, kind of predictably, I think. Um, next, we'll be talking about. We've got some other aircraft, and we've got the uh, also got a, a car to have a look at. So I actually thought I was going to do the car first, but I decided to start with this first because I think this perhaps appeals to more of the subscribers uh, that like aircraft, like myself. Um, but that that car should be quite interesting. And we've got a hind call, haven't we, to come? So. That's where we're at. So well done ICM. Very impressed so far. Excellent new kit you brought out there. Fantastic. Made in the Ukraine. Yeah. Very worthy of supporting that, that manufacturer, I think. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the show and found it interesting. Please stay tuned because there's more to come, as I mentioned. Don't forget to ding the notification bell. Uh, and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, as I mentioned... The black gloves because you know generally I'm handling stuff that might might or might not be sold on, uh, especially if it's going via charity auction. We don't want my paws all over it, and I wear black gloves a lot of the time when I'm modelling anyway, nearly all the time actually. Uh, and there we go. So um, yeah, we, we keep it like it's new and still fresh from the factory. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you all again soon. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. See you soon, and bye for now.